Just when I think that Patreon cannot possibly behave more foolishly than they have the last couple of weeks, they find a way to do it. Patreon withheld distribution of funds to at least one account without giving notice. Scott Helm discovered that his Patreon account was on hold based upon suspicious activity, yet he was not notified via email. He discovered the situation when he checked his account after he noticed that his payouts had not been deposited in his bank. His account was quickly reinstated after he published the news on Twitter, but I have to wonder just how many other accounts have been suspended for days, even weeks, while Trust and Safety works through their backlog to clear up allegations of suspicious activity or hate speech. I also have to wonder if Patreon realizes just how serious this problem is, given their recent actions. It's time for some Roasted Opinions. YouTuber Law has announced that he will be filing a complaint against Patreon and PayPal for the group boycott of Subscribestar. He reports that he has seen evidence of collusion between these two companies. I certainly hope that the investigation turns up all the necessary evidence to determine the truth in this matter, and that if a group boycott is confirmed that the penalties are sufficient to put a stop to these practices in online financial business. Just in case there are a few of you who still don't understand the group boycott, think of this as a denial of service attack. PayPal and Stripe both refuse to process transactions for Subscribestar, which effectively prevents Subscribestar from being able to provide a competing service to Patreon. This denies Subscribestar access to the market and forces their clients to look elsewhere for these services, thus preserving Patreon's dominance of this specific market. This is a serious accusation, and it could force Patreon out of business. Jack Conte and company have a big problem, and this is just the latest development in the Creators vs. Patreon debacle. Let's look at the storm of problems which have hit Patreon in December from a business perspective. Any company relies upon its reputation in order to maintain their market share and grow. That's why so many companies have a marketing department and why advertising agencies make so much money coming up with new ways to attract customers and clients for their companies. When bad press about an entertainer happens, it can sometimes have a positive effect depending on whether the bad press is about personal problems like divorce or about legal problems like criminal activities. When bad press happens about companies, though, it always has a negative effect. Customers and potential customers become less willing to spend money for goods and services. Clients may close their accounts the investors in publicly traded companies will start looking at selling their holdings, which negatively impacts the valuation of the company and exacerbates the financial problems resulting from the bad press. Now everyone knows that some bad press is unavoidable. It's just part of doing business. Well-run companies do their best to limit bad press by identifying potential problems and eliminating them, and in all honesty, that's what started the problems for Patreon. Patreon has some clients who use the platform to fund questionable activities. In order to limit their exposure to backlash when these situations are discovered, the trust and safety team at Patreon reviews and as necessary suspends the accounts in question. I understand their reasons for this, but do I think that they are doing their job properly at all? Um, no. Just, no. Instead of booting pages which are expressly violating the terms of use, Patreon's trust and safety team started booting pages for people with whom they don't agree. Lauren Southern and Zargon of Akkad are just two famous examples. There are others. Jack Conte has stated publicly that having the ability to stop someone's income is a serious responsibility. He's absolutely right about that. So, Jack... Why on earth are you allowing your trust and safety team to act the way that they are acting? I've already pointed out in previous videos that suspending accounts without prior notification for violations not expressly enumerated in the terms of service and without the opportunity to correct the problem is a possible breach of contract. I've also pointed out that the sudden suspension of Subscribestar's transaction processing by PayPal and Stripe in the same day may constitute a group boycott under antitrust laws, and therefore expose Patreon to civil penalties. Do I really have to point out that signing up new patron memberships for a suspended account and processing transactions without distributing the money to your clients is virtually a textbook case of wire fraud? Maybe I don't, because Patreon seems to have addressed the situation almost immediately once the story broke. Still, 
All three of these situations are bad press for your company, Jack, and proving my earlier statements about the effects of bad press isn't very hard at all. You have dozens, if not hundreds, of clients, including major top-tier clients, leaving your company. You have hundreds, possibly thousands, of customers canceling their memberships. You have dozens of videos released on YouTube talking about this, and in case you haven't noticed, YouTube is where the bulk of your clients and customers come from. You literally could not choose a more damaging environment for the release of this information. This is like a Christmas tree company putting up posters at tree lots stating that their trees are fuller and lusher because your tree farms use only locally sourced raw sewage to fertilize the trees. It's just dumb, Jack, and you need to make some fundamental changes in the way your trust and safety team does business if your company is going to survive this debacle. Listen carefully, Jack. We don't need you conducting interviews about how serious you take trust and safety and how sobering the thought that you can hurt your clients is. We need another kind of communication. Trust and safety contacting your clients directly and immediately when there is a problem. Call, email, DM, whatever method works, but contact them immediately. They can address your concerns, and you can maintain good relationships with both your clients who receive payments you process and your customers who are attempting to make those payments. One little change in policy. That's all it would have taken to avoid this mess. Yeah. You probably will have to hire more people for your trust and safety team if you're going to keep it completely organic. I would recommend starting with the head of trust and safety, who seems to have brought a political agenda with her when she arrived. I would also consider implementing at least some form of electronic monitoring to look for violations of your terms of use. So long as you continue to insist on live people evaluating every reported issue and no electronic monitoring, you will continue to slip further behind in policing violations. You already have so many reports that you cannot review the pages and content of your clients without those clients being reported to you first. That means, Jack, that you are now reacting to trust and safety problems instead of proactively identifying problems. You are now dependent upon the reports of others, and as far as I can tell, you have been for a while. Is this really how you want to do business, Jack? Dealing with problems after they show up in public forums? Do you really want to rely on the reports of people who may have their own agendas for making those reports? I would also seriously consider your legal exposure in these matters. You have potential lawsuit exposure. You have exposure to violations of antitrust law. You are now flirting with allegations of wire fraud. These won't just provoke a downturn in your company's growth. They can bring your company down. And since you have already shown that this kind of service is possible, Other companies will step into the void you have left behind to collect all of those transactions which Patreon, PayPal, and Stripe refuse to process. Oops. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlists. Check out these channels I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell. 